snacks, and I'm here right now at the MSI booth for CES 2025. Let's check it out, starting with the motherboards. So these are the Project Zero motherboards. Now, in the past year, we saw a trend of having all of the ports at the back of the motherboard. Therefore, we're having a much cleaner look out here in the front because there's no cables. We do have an update this year on that. And that update is that that clean, wire-free Project Zero look is finally trickling down to the other motherboard lines, including what you see here, like the Pro Z890S Wi-Fi PZ, the Mag Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi PZ in white, and the same thing in black. And as you might have guessed, that PC at the end of the name stands for Project Zero. All of the Project Zero motherboards on display here are Intel boards. However, the AMD boards will be coming out in Q2. All right, let's check out the rest of the motherboards. So we have the Intel motherboards here and the AMD motherboards over there. Let's check out the AMD motherboards first. In case you didn't know, the M in MAG stands for MSI. The G stands for Gaming. The A stands for Arsenal in MAG. The P stands for Pro in an MPG board. And the E stands for Enthusiast in a MEG board. First up is this clean looking white silver motherboard. This is the MPG. PGB 850 Edge TI Wi-Fi. Now all the new AMD boards are on an AM5 socket so you can use your 7000, 8000 or the new 9000 series CPUs with DDR5 support. This one has a 14 plus 2 plus 1 power phase delivery system, 5 gigabyte LAN connection and Wi-Fi 7. And of course the easy clips for the M.2s that I love. Next up is the MAGB 850 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. You'll get mostly similar performance and feature sets as the MPG Edge, but obviously this one has a different aesthetic. And you'll notice that instead of the LED code readout display, you'll have the Easy Debug LED. And here is the other version of the Tomahawk, the X870E Tomahawk Wi-Fi. No, you didn't accidentally rewind the video. This board looks almost identical except for the Max branding and the addition of the LED readout on the motherboard for error codes or temperature. Feature-wise, you also get a higher chipset level with higher DDR5 RAM speed, USB 4 connections, and more PC lanes. Moving up the line, we have the MPG X870E Carbon Wi-Fi. And this is also a popular board because it lands right in the middle of the lineup above the value boards that get you so much bang for the buck and is slotted right before the MEG motherboards. This year, you get Wi-Fi 7 added and 5 GB LAN port instead of 2.5. Power delivery is about the same with 18 plus 2 plus 1 Duet Rail power system. And this is also the first carbon Wi-Fi that has USB 4 connections, meaning you'll get 40 GB per second, which is twice the speed as 3.2. And of course, it has the easy M.2 clip. So here you can take a look at the I.O. ports in the back, and here's an interesting thing that they did. Instead of labeling the ports USB 3.0 or 3.1, 3.2, or 4.0, they labeled them with the actual USB speeds. So you see the 10 gig and 40 gig speeds. Because, let's be honest here, most people don't know the exact speed of USB 3.1 versus 3.2, and so on. Overall, you'll have plenty of USB ports on the back over here, a total of 13. And you can see how they did this. If you see on the side, they have that stack design that makes it possible to fit it all in there. Moving up in the lineup, we have the Meg Ace board. Now, this version is the Intel version, but all the design language is similar um, and the specs are similar to the AMD version as well. The Intel version gets Thunderbolt 4 ports as opposed to USB 4, DDR5 support with speeds over 9200. And if you're a crazy extreme overclocker, you get that high power phase of 24 plus 2 plus 1 with 110 amp smart power stage, which uses integrated MOSFETs. In layman's terms, it means you get very stable high power delivery. Of course, you'll get that 10 gig LAN port that I love, Wi-Fi 7 obviously, and upgraded browser guard and metal backplates for more efficient cooling on the board. And speaking of premium, the board that few might actually need, but many want, we've got the Meg Godlike motherboard. Again, the specs are just as good whether it's the Intel or AMD version. And if you thought the power phase was generous in the Ace, the Godlike gives you an extra power phase and it works out to 26 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 for super stable power delivery. 
You also get the 9200 DDR5 RAM speed and that super cool dynamic dashboard display that godlike motherboards are known for. The amazing Mr. Cliff from MSI also took us on an awesome guided tour where we saw an ITX version of the Edge motherboard. And I think it's super cool that MSI is still supporting that smaller form factor even though it's becoming more niche. And of course, I have to mention one of my favorite motherboards, which is the Unify series. We didn't get a Unify board last year and I was kind of sad about that, but this year the Unify is back with a Unify X motherboard. I've always appreciated the all-black look and no RGB with the focus on just performance. This year, they added some mirror-like accents. Now, I still don't know how I feel about the accents, but they are growing on me. They also had a few modded concepts on display which showed off what can be done in this upcoming monster case. Now, this is the Meg Maestro and in this case are two 4090 Supreme, a Z890 Ace with an Intel Core Ultra 9 CPU along with an MPG Z890 ITX board and 4070 Ventus with an Intel Core Ultra 7 processor. They had another concept on display this Project Zero X, which looks super sleek and clean. We also saw one new PSU. This is the AI1600T. It uses that golden black design language that you see in the Enthusiast line. Of course, it will support ATX 3.1 and features two native 12 volt 2x6 cables. All right, let's take a look at some of the displays. So here we have the MPG 272 QR QD OLED gaming monitor. The world's first 27 inch 2K 500Hz quantum dot OLED gaming monitor. Now, honestly, I am very happy with 240Hz, but with that said, I don't play a lot of shooters. But my nephew, Dr. Dalton does, and we go back and forth and he swears he can tell the difference on a 500Hz monitor compared to 240Hz. Now. Despite our different takes, we can agree that it is a beautiful monitor. Now, if you're good with 240Hz and want 4K, MSI has a pair of 32-inch QD OLED monitors that do 4K at 240Hz. The MPG272QR monitor updates last year's model with a white bezel and G-Sync. And if you want a higher bandwidth display port 2.1A spec, you'd want the MPG322URX QD OLED. And what that will do is allow you to get 4K 240Hz without compression. I also want to show the new dual mode monitors that Cliff showed me. So the monitor on the left is a mini LED monitor and the one on the right is an IPS monitor. Both monitors automatically switch back and forth between 4K 180Hz and Full HD 320 depending on the source. So for example, browsing the web would drop it to Full HD while playing a game would bump it back to 4K 180Hz. There's also an option to manually switch if need be. And if you were looking for a monitor arm mount for your displays, they did have options at the booth that can hold your monitor up to 57 inches. Moving on, there were a couple of AIOs on display. This is the Magcore Liquid A15. This one here is the P13, which has a modern look to it that reminded me of a Nest thermostat. But somehow the look works pretty good as the cover is raised more with a higher dome shape. And here you see Cliff show as the A13. And the cool feature about this one is the removable lid cap on top of the cooler. Also at the booth were tons of peripherals, including mice and keyboards. If you're looking for a wireless gaming mouse, I really like the feel of the VersaPro wireless mouse. This one has a true 8,000 Hertz polling rate and up to 26,000 DPI. When testing it out, I didn't notice any lag at all and it felt really good. You can also charge it through the charging puck or use the wire if you like. And the wireless connectivity includes Bluetooth and 2.4G wireless. Next up, Cliff showed us the new Force Pro and this controller was very impressive. Everything was customizable and I loved how they utilized magnets. All the control sticks were removable and swappable as well as the D-pad. Getting in there to swap and remove, which sometimes can be a chore, was really quick and easy, thanks to the use of the magnets. Moving to keyboards, MSI had a handful of keyboards and the biggest update was that they finally had hot swappable keycaps. Now, I'll be honest, if you're a keyboard snob, you might have your reservations towards their first release of hot swappable keycaps. 
But this is a really big step in the right direction and a pretty solid first go at it. For the next iteration, it would be cool to see the base made out of metal instead of plastic. But on the flip side, the price point is expected to be around $80. Next up are the data mags and I love these things. I saw them at Computex last year and they're super useful and easy to connect to your phone, your laptop. Personally, they work really well for when I'm on the go and during events like these so I can edit on my laptop and store tons of footage. The 20 gigabyte version is already out and they're going to release a 40 gigabyte version which I'm looking forward to. Now, before we go, I did want to show you the cool marketing campaign they got going on in celebration of their new GPU platform called Vanguard. What is Vanguard? If you're familiar with MSI GPUs, you have the Ventus, the Gaming, and the Supreme at the top. And now they're adding in this new line called the Vanguard. And on this line, you get an upgraded look with RGB on the GPUs. Now, the reason is because they got lots of feedback from Supreme owners who really wanted some RGB in the Supreme line. So that's where the Vanguard kind of fills the gap. And I have to admit, the Vanguard editions look super cool. But before we get to that, the Vanguard launch editions will have these cool Lucky the Dragon miniature statues. There are 10 different versions and one of them is super rare. As a matter of fact, Cliff was saying there was just a 0.5% chance of getting it. So if you get it, let me know. I want to see it. All right, guys, that wraps up part one. Part two will be out in a day or two, and that one will feature GPUs.